talk about um, how the administration tries to um, make sure this doesn't incentivize more arrests of innocent Americans beyond what the president said, advising people not to go to abroad, not to go abroad in certain places, especially because you're looking at this inherent imbalance between releasing uh, or between securing the release of innocent American in exchange for rightfully convicted criminals, including a murder. Look, it's a fair question. It's a question that we grapple with every time that we look at the hard decisions involved in one of these exchanges. Um, it is difficult to send back a convicted criminal uh, to secure the release of an innocent American. And yet, sometimes the choice is between doing that and consigning that person basically to live out their days in prison in a hostile foreign country or in the hands of um, uh, a hostile power. So from our perspective, uh, we have assessed and analyzed that risk, and we have judged that the benefit of reuniting Americans, of bringing people home, and also of vindicating the idea that the American president and the American government are going to do what it takes to protect and secure the release of innocent Americans, that that benefit outweighs the risk, and that's how we have proceeded. I would point out, in addition to that, that in periods of time when the U.S. government didn't tend to do prisoner exchanges, Americans were unjustly detained and held hostage overseas. In periods where we did, Americans were unjustly detained and held hostage overseas. So I think there are real questions, and, and Roger Karstens, the hostage negotiator at the State Department, has actually pointed out that in this analysis, it is not quite as clear cut that the evidence actually demonstrates uh, the kind of result that your question speaks to, um, that you know, a lot more people get taken because we do these exchanges. But it's something that we have to pay attention to, and it's something that makes these decisions by the president not simple decisions. When did it become clear that Krasikov was this linchpin to a deal like this? And was it during the negotiations over Brittany Griner? When you're engaged in a negotiation and one side lays down a position, there's not like a, a light bulb moment when you say, okay, that position is immovable. That has to be tested and alternatives have to be suggested and proposals get put on the table and rejected, and new proposals and rejected. So it is less of a aha moment, okay, uh, now we know. And it's more something that you accumulate through the experience of the negotiation. And so over the course of this negotiation, we did reach the conclusion that Krasikov was a key.